Hey everyone, uh, welcome back, welcome back. As you guys can see, I've got some um, car parts laying out. Um, so, a while ago I actually had to replace my um, my thermostat on here, right? Because it was, um, it was um, failing. So I replaced it, but I've noticed ever since I replaced it, I'm losing water, right? So, I mean, the thermostat was definitely failed right it was just not opening and closing anymore so it needed to be replaced so i replaced it but every two days i'm putting water in my vehicle and you know i was putting the antifreeze stuff and that gets expensive you know if you're not figuring out why you have a leak so what i did guys is here so i basically took off the shroud i took off all the stuff that's in here so that way i could actually see what's going on i filled up my reservoir all the way to the top with water capped it and turned it on and let the vehicle just run because I was thinking, okay, if I don't see, you know, if I'm losing water, I have to be dripping it somewhere, right? And, and I was hoping it wasn't like, you know, blown head gasket, right? So I checked my oil and my oil was perfectly fine. So, you know, we're good on that. But after letting it run for a while, um, it's actually leaking at the water pump. Um, so what I actually just did was after I let it run, I could, yeah, I basically just let it run for probably about like 30 to 45 minutes. And then, you know, it really started getting hot and then the, the, the pressure and everything started building up. And then I could actually see water, um, starting to leak out the back, the back side of the, the drum here, you know, leaking out and, and coming down. Uh, and then I could, if you look farther underneath, you could see kind of old water marks where the water was going and drying up as, you know, as it was pouring out. So, um, I actually just got done removing the, um, the fan. This nut right here spins by itself, right? So you cannot lock the front. The front, you know, <laughs> there's no way to lock it because the, the fan, right? And it's a clutch, right? So um, what I had to do, guys, is um, I basically took a chisel. Where's my chisel? And if you guys can see, I actually um, um, broke off the tip from hitting it so hard. Um, but what I had to do was when the fan was still in here, I had to get in between the bell here and the fan which was kind of awkward and i kind of went at an angle on the nut right because you cannot guys i'm sorry if i mean if you guys have a car that come, it comes off easier than great for you guys but i mean you cannot remove that nut without you know because here's the thing guys when you put your your wrench on the nut that's in the back and you spin it this will spin right so you cannot unlock it and even if the belt is on it i mean the belt is helping right because it's got some tension on it i mean i even tried to make the belt real tight and it would still just slide in the belt right so the only other way that i was able to remove the the nut on the back here was actually by grabbing a chisel <coughs> let me kind of get you guys a visual here so it's like this actually so, you know, this is facing you, right? And then you got a little spot right here where this nut's at, and then you're at the bell already. So the bell is right there, right? You're right on it. So you have to put your hand, like, in between everything. And what I did was I actually went at an angle, right? I don't know if you guys can see that. So you can, can see the little chisel marks I got there. So I made it, a, uh, made it at an angle. I started chiseling away until I kind of made a groove where it could lock in. And then that way I could always put my chisel right back in the same spot, right? And then I really got on it with the... Uh, my um small small sledgehammer and started just whacking it so i actually did one spot here and then i you know moved it all the way around and now when i now keep in mind guys when i'm moving this it's still attached to the bell and the bell is moving with it because it's locked on right so here's the other two chisel mark that i have here that i could lock into that was the only way i could free up this this nut from um you know from that so like we kind of give you guys a visual here so that goes on together, right? With the when it's screwed all the way on, it gets even tighter, right? And so you have a very limited space of being able to reach in there and um, try to remove that that nut right there, right? So that was the best way I could get it done. But it, yeah, it's off. I mean, I don't really care. The the nuts a little got some marks in it. In fact, it's going to be better next time because if the water pump fails again, I've already got my notches, <laughs> so I can put my chisel back on there, and um, you know use the little sledgehammer and start you know hammering away on it and then she'll she'll come loose so it took me about i don't know 20 good minutes at least guys of just trying to hold it all together and trying to um break that nut loose so i finally was able to get that um you know removed so thank god on that one because that was a tough one but um now that that's gone now i can remove the belt right the serpentine belt remove the belt out the tensioner is right here so i just gotta you know put my um socket on 
pull it down i can release the tension remove remove the belt let it come back and then um i got to basically remove um six bolts so i need to remove the two bolts to actually hold the tensioner to the water pump right see the, there's one and there's one up here and then i've got um six other bolts that are spread out there's like uh where is it yeah one two three four five six six on that side to remove the um the actual water pump okay so now we have the serpentine belt which is basically right here guys right so that's off back as you guys can see now the water pump is removed um, here it is right here so here is the stock this is the original water pump for this vehicle um, so she's definitely um, been through a lot you know so I'm gonna save the little clamp here for my holes my hose clamp right um, but yeah, it, it's it doesn't have play in it, but but when you spin it, you can have, you can absolutely tell it's rough, <laughs> you know. Um, so <clears throat> what I'm gonna have to do now is so um, on this side we have you know where water's flowing in and out, flowing in and out, right? So what I'm gonna have to do is clean up this surface right because it's you know it's got some gunk on it and stuff clean it up make it nice and flat again and um same thing on that side so that way when we put our new gasket on um you know we got a really nice um surface to um you know get back to because like right here is pretty rough and you know so we'll in we'll fact you guys can kind of see the outline it's kind of faded and stuff but you can kind of get a general sense of it but if you don't have either one of those um like what i did just to make it very easy before i removed the belt i just took a picture with my phone very easy right that way when you get ready to hook it all back up you can make sure it's all being looped the right way and all of that stuff so just a quick tip uh, maybe take a picture of things before you remove them and then that way when you get ready to reinstall them you know you're not scratching your head thinking oh wait a minute how did that go again which bolt did i use for that you know it just makes more sense you can just look at the picture and then you're you're good to go and now another thing i like to do is i keep all my parts you know together even if you're on the grass doesn't matter um so we have all the little um plastic pins just to hold the shrouds right um, here's the tensioner so when I remove everything I actually slide all the bolts back into it right so that way when I'm ready to install it I have all my bolts together so you can see, can see that there's two um, same length bolts and then there's one that's shorter right so it's always nice just to put everything back in there so that way it just makes life so much easier when you're putting it all back together guys because when you start removing a bunch of stuff you'll have nuts bolts everything so like I have a um, pile of the bolts for the um water pump so i mean you know they're all the same size so i can just put them all together there so i just kind of you know keep somewhat organized on your little pieces and parts because <laughs> i know a lot of people that um take apart stuff and when they put it back together they're always left over with a couple things you know <laughs> like oh they have like two boats left over or this or that and <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny but anyway guys i'll give you guys more footage as it comes along here Guys, um, now you guys can see that I got my new um, water pump out of the package. We also have the gaskets over here and an O-ring. Uh, here's the old one. So what I always do is, even if you buy, you tell your, you know, if you go down to Napa or whatever auto parts store you're buying it from, um, before I, you know, install stuff, I always like to match things up just because, all because the bolt pattern might be the same doesn't mean it's the same a part right so it's always good to just double check and look over everything to make sure everything looks identical everything front and back the bell all of that stuff needs to make sure it's identical right um and then that way you know when you're when you finally start bolting it all down and you know you're just not going back over your work right so uh, we do have a new one here brand new as you can see so turn it over turn this one over let's inspect it here's the old one here's the new one let's double check our boat patterns check our inlets and outlets yep so we're, we're good this is identical so we are ready to install this bad boy i went ahead and cleaned up the surface now so it's nice and smooth like it's supposed to um what i did was i took some um sandpaper here this, this was just some leftover sandpaper this is 220 yep 220 wet or dry right um i just had it laying around you don't want to use something real rough right because you're not trying to pit it you're just trying to take down whatever is rough or whatever so right now it's really nice and smooth 
Um, and then I also did the one in the back there. So that's nice and smooth as well. Sorry, back here. Uh, then I just got a rag, right? And went and cleaned up all the edges and got up in the corners, cleaned it all out. Same thing in the back. So that way we have a clean surface again. So now what I'm going to do is go get the gasket maker. And um, I know some of you guys are gonna be like, ah, you don't need it. You don't need it. Yeah, well, I, I don't care. You're not the one doing the job. I am. So I'm, I would always rather put gasket. Um, in fact, um, it looks like they, they put gasket sealer on this too. So I'm not the only one using it, guys. You see right here? Look, that's gasket maker right there. See that stuff right here? So I'm not the only one. And even on the other side, right? So um, I got my new ones here. I'll go get it. I'll go ahead and put uh, a little bit on it. Um, and... Yeah, see, look, they use gasket maker on both sides. I'm just looking at it. They use it on both sides because I can see the gasket maker on top of the old. See right there? That's all gasket maker right there. See that stuff coming off? Right? So, uh, I'm just going to basically do exactly what they, they did anyway. I also already mo removed and installed the thermostat. So, this is the only thing that you would save off of your old one here. Right? So, there's the old port. So this has already been tightened down, ready to go. Uh, so we're getting very close here. I just got to get gasket maker, slap it on, and start tightening them down. All right, guys. So as you guys can see, we have the new water pump uh, mounted. I don't want to say installed because we're not done yet. Um, but I did use the gasket maker on both sides. Um, and basically the way I tighten them down, if when, when you guys remove these bolts right here, you can kind of feel how much tension is on it when you, you know, crack it loose to um, start removing all this stuff. Just kind of remember how much tension that was so that way when you put it on, you know, you're not over stripping them. Because these bolts, you know, you can easily snap them and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, just be, pay attention to how much, you know, strength you're putting on it. So, um, basically what I did was the same thing like you do a, a rim or a tire. Um, you know, you skip around. You don't just go in one circle. I skip around. So what I did was I lined up the bottoms, hand tightened just to kind of get everything started. I tightened this one down just a little bit. Went to the bottom over here a little bit. Went to the top over here a little bit. And then the top over there a little bit. Then this one and then the one on the side. And then once I kind of got it all where I wanted it, then I started just going around and around in the, in the pattern that I was doing. And then you can, you know, feel it cinch down and stay nice and tight. So stuff just basically slides back on like that. Right here. Put it back on. And then, you know, you got your clamp right here. You squeeze with your um, pliers or whatever you got. And um, move the hose clamp back on. So, you know, you just go ahead and slide that one on. So, that's that. Then we got the one down here. That's going to go here, but I need to remove this clamp and put it on the holes. And then slide this one all the way on, right? So, that's already that. And then, uh, like I said, just a fan. And they put a little um, plastic thing here just to kind of protect the threads as you're working on your car. So make sure you remove that. Uh, so as you guys can see, we now have everything reinstalled. We have the water pump installed. We have the tensioner installed. Serpentine belt installed. Fan installed. All the holes is installed. Um, everything's nice and tight. And I actually started putting water in it to kind of help purge some of the air out. So I've been adding, adding, letting it bubble out, whatever. All right, guys, so we have um, the car back on. Um, as you guys can see, I got my intake connected so that way the sensor can read it and stay on. Uh, so everything is cold. We have cold water in there. Everything is cold. You guys can see that we have water up to the top here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and let it run, get hot again, let the thermostat open so that way it'll start flowing all the water through the system. And in that, at that point, once that thermostat starts to open up, guys, that's when it's gonna really suck down the water and a lot of air is gonna come out. And then we'll just go ahead and keep filling it up until it's finally topped off completely. Put the cap back on it and we'll just let it run and run and run until it gets nice and hot. Um, and then we'll visually check. See, that's why I don't like putting the shrouds on because then you can see down inside of here and see what's going on with your vehicle. So um, right now we just need to let it warm up completely and um, you know start doing some checks after it gets hot. To see if we have any leaks around any of our seals our hoses you know all of that good stuff if we don't have any leaks which i don't think we will but if 
we if we're good then um like i said we'll just drain the water out and put the appropriate amount of um um you know um um antifreeze in here and then we should be good to go so i'm just basically just going to take a break guys and let it warm up and i'll give you guys more footage when it comes along here all right guys we have good news as you guys know the tr there's also another little trick when it's running and stuff is to um squeeze the hoses so you guys see there's a hose down here so you can squeeze this one back and forth and it'll help push out the air then you have the top one here and you can also squeeze that one back and forth and that'll help push out whatever air you may have in the in the line um, but yeah definitely let it run for a while let it get real hot so it definitely got up to the operating temperature um, and I added water as needed so it's all good so and um, I also did a visual inspection of all the parts and stuff that we put back together here right and um, there is no drips, no moisture, no water. So we've pretty much um, taken care of the um, water pump, which is good news. Really, really good news. Sorry guys, my camera's having a little bit harder time to focus because, you know, the sun's pretty much gone almost. So um, yeah, that's good news. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and bleed all this water back out, put the cap on, you know, flush the radiator, and um, that's pretty much it. Just go ahead and put um, antifreeze back in it to the proper levels, 